All right, guys, today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, I'm going to try a good old-fashioned Arnold Schwarzenegger chest routine. It's a high-volume routine and see how it is. I've never done really anything like this, but I found it here on muscleandfitness.com. So the exercises are going to be five sets of bench press, which is where I am now. Five sets of incline bench press. Flat bench dumbbell fly, which I'm not going to do that exercise because it's a terrible exercise. I'm going to do just a Nautilus chest fly, five sets, and then dips, four to five sets. The rep ranges are 10 to 12 or 12 to 15, 20 sets. <laughs> but I'm gonna perform them similar to the way, I'm gonna perform them with more control, but I'm not gonna do like what I usually do. I'm just gonna perform how Arnold would. And um, give a review of it, see what it's like, and uh, see what happens. So here on the bench press now, I've got it set up in a way to where if I drop it on myself, I'm not gonna crush myself. So as you can see, I got the catch right here, which is, it still touches my chest, but just in case. These sets are not gonna be to failure. They're probably gonna be like, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know, I'm just gonna wing it. But right here, I've gotta stretch my pecs and my shoulders out. So when I come down here, it's pretty tight, and that's because I usually don't use as much range of motion. And um, so essentially what I'm, what I'm gonna do here is just leave it here and then do some repetitions because I need to retrain my nervous system, specifically the Golgi tendon organ and the muscle spindles to permit more range of motion. So if I come down here and I feel tightness, essentially what I'm feeling is I'm feeling the involuntary muscle contraction, the stretch reflex that's preventing comfortable range of motion. So you simply, that's essentially what stretching is. So I'm just gonna do this and then you'll notice after you hold it over time, you do a couple reps, the tightness down here goes away. That's essentially what stretching is. So I'm just gonna my body to allow this. I'm gonna do just the bar. Yeah, it's still a little bit tight, so I'm just gonna hold it. So essentially what happens is when you load the muscle in the stretch position, the signal from the Golgi tendon organ actually dampens and the tightness starts to go away. So that involuntary muscle contraction, that stretch reflex, dampens, it lessens, and that's where you get, you get the looseness. I'm already feeling looser. All right, so the next step, we're gonna continue to warm up. I'm gonna warm up with 135. It's gonna be a lot of volume, honestly. I might end up actually stretching my shoulders a little more because we're gonna need it. So it's not a bad idea to, if you're not used to bench press, stretch your shoulders to permit more range of motion. You really don't need to stretch before or after workouts unless you're doing something specific like this. So do a little bit of warm up. Let's get a little bit of stretch down here. All right. That's the thing you're doing like when you're doing a bench press, there's just so much more to it. You really do need to make sure you're ready to go on it. I personally don't bench press at all. Considering I don't bench press, I'm gonna do a lot of warm ups. Really make sure I'm good to go with this. Now, what weight are we gonna do? Five sets, 10 to 12. 185? Considering that I don't bench at all, 185 sounds good. Now, the reason a lot of these old school bodybuilders did split routines is because just, just this chest workout was 20 sets. It's like 200 repetitions. <laughs> Think about it, five sets, 10 repetitions, 50 repetitions per exercise, four exercises. Look at that, 200 reps. The reason they had to do splits is because you couldn't you couldn't train all the body parts in a workout with five sets per body part per muscle group rather. So it's like you know by the time I'm done with this, let's see what time is it. It's actually about quarter to eight p.m. I normally don't train this late, but I want to come here and film where there's almost nobody in the gyms, 24-hour gyms, four people in here. So that's the reason they did splits is because uh, with all those sets, how do you do it? All right, here we go. First set, 10 reps. Let's see. My bicep tendon feels a little funky, but we'll see. All right, 10 reps. Uh, I don't really know. Probably, probably could go 225, but maybe I should. I don't really know how long to wait. Which, should I wait a minute? Two minutes? I'm gonna go 225, that was really light. All right, so we got 225 on there now. Should be more appropriate. This is another reason why these workouts take so long. I'm trying to do this the way they would traditionally do it. What do they take? One, two, three minutes in between sets? What do you do? <laughs> you just sit here? I'm gonna have a hard time waiting. So, how about the weather? 
Here in Florida, it's actually not super hot today. We actually had uh, weather in the low 80s today. I guess I can find stuff to talk about in between sets. I'll give it, I'll give it another minute. One thing I wanted to talk about though, the layoff thing. So somebody sent me a post by some random fitness guy who said, uh, what was it? Layoff, whatever the, he was talking about the fact that you start to lose muscle really quickly when you take a layoff. And he provided three studies, okay? The first study was measuring satellite cell activity. So they found that within just a few days, satellite cell activity goes down. Oh shit. Because the satellite cells also repair the damage. <laughs> and they concluded that since satellite cell activity goes down, you start to lose muscle. Makes no sense. So that was the first study he provided. The second study he provided measured muscle atrophy in people who had their limbs immobilized. Meaning like if you're wearing a cast or something, you're not gonna use it at all. And they found, hey, within a week, you start to lose muscle. significant muscle when your limbs immobilized. Well, no shit, <laughs> obviously. But are any of you gonna immobilize your limbs if you take a week off of training? No. Second study, completely irrelevant. Third study, they measured muscle cross-sectional area. While muscle cross-sectional area is muscle size, what I propose is that you're not going to lose actual muscle contractile tissue for several weeks after training. No training. Okay, not immobilization, but detraining. We're talking about the contractile tissue here. And if you take a week or two off, you are going to reduce the amount of glycogen in your muscles. Um, the cell swelling that you normally get from continuous training is gonna go down. The cross-sectional area will temporarily be reduced. But that's not loss of muscle. That's just loss of muscle size. Temporary loss of muscle size. When I get done with this workout, I'm gonna have temporary increase in muscle size from the pump. If you take two weeks off, you're gonna have a temporary decrease in muscle size for those reasons. So the studies he provided were absolute nonsense. The truth is you are not going to lose significant contractile elements of your muscle with one, two, probably three weeks of no training at all. And the difference between me and these other influencers is I'm not an influencer, I'm a coach. I own gyms, train people all the time. And what I propose in terms of detraining is what I've witnessed in my clients, tracking their progress and strength, tracking their body composition. I've had women who are over 50 years old go away for two weeks, come back, and be stronger and have better composition. So it's one thing to recite all these studies. It's another thing to practically apply these principles and see how they work in the real world. And I seem to be one of the few people who actually do that. All right, set two. I think we waited long enough. Set two. So I'm being really careful with the range of motion. And the reason is my pec tendons are not used to loading this far down. So if I were to bench press consistently over time, what I would do is I would allow my body to, to adapt to loading them in that stretch position because you gotta be really careful doing something like this if you haven't done it in a while. So my reps are gonna, I'm not coming super far down for the sake of appeasing power lifters. I'd rather protect my, my tendons. But that's the thing, I don't bench press at all. All right, so, all right, waste 10 minutes. <laughs> I guess I'll wait another minute or two. I used to think of this workout that was taking so friggin' long. I'd have been more than halfway through my full body workout by now, but I gotta let it here and do the rest thing. If this is how most people trained. If somebody got introduced to training and this is what they were told to do, I could see why they would stop doing it. This is taking freaking long. All right, I'll give it another minute. Back to the uh, detraining period thing. I don't even understand what the debate is about because who cares? Are any of you guys realistically worried about taking a few weeks off of training? What do you think's gonna happen, all right? You all heard the term muscle memory, all right? It's not muscle memory. It's the fact that you actually don't lose much. It's neurological, and it's the fact that all of the reduction in muscle size is temporary, just like the temporary increase in muscle size when you're training, you get a pump. The temporary reduction in muscle strength. It's neurological. You get it back like that. So I don't understand what everybody's so worried about. Are you worried that you might have to take a week off and you're gonna lose all your gains? You know how insane that sounds? Okay, here we go. Set three. Oh, got to put the 
25. Set three. Ten reps. All right. Two more sets to go. Let's see. I'm just going to wait a minute. I'm not going to wait. That's the thing. You didn't really say, if I look on the workout here, it doesn't say on to rest between sets. I'm just kind of going by what I normally see people do, which is scroll TikTok for way too long. No, it does not say how long to rest. But I'm going to do a minute because I'm not sitting here all fucking night. <laughs> I've already been filming this part for 15 minutes. All right, here we go. Set four. All right, so by set four, I actually got to the point where I was close to failure. So this is where this doesn't really make sense to me. Why would you take four sets to get to the point where you're recruiting high threshold motor units? The first three sets were easy. The fourth set finally gets difficult and I finally start recruiting the fast switch high threshold motor units that are responsible for growth. My logic, Mike Menser's logic, Dorian Yates' logic, Arthur Jones' logic was, let's just take it all the way to that difficult part in the first set, in one set. Why would we take multiple sets to get to the point where we're pushing really hard? Now this fifth set I'm about to do is gonna be the most difficult. We're probably gonna hit failure or get close to it. Why on earth? What do we take five sets to get there? It doesn't really make any sense. The old belief was when the weight goes up and down, you produce more muscle damage. And that muscle damage was a stimulus for muscle growth. But based on a study published in 2021 or 2022, where they examined all the mechanisms of skeletal muscle growth, they found that muscle damage does not attribute to the muscle growth stimulus. So it doesn't make sense to do a million reps. It doesn't make sense to do 50 reps in a bench press because it doesn't even contribute to the stimulus. It makes more sense just to do one or two sets and just take the set all the way balls to the wall and uh, recruit those high threshold fast twitch motor units right off the bat. Because remember, based on Henneman's principle, fast twitch motor units are recruited based on intensity of effort where you're pushing hard. So as long as you take any exercise to that point where you're pushing really hard, whether you do it one, two, three, 20 sets, makes no difference. 20 sets just gets you to that point longer. All right, last, last set. set. Starting to get heavy, I'm not gonna lie. But it's just a very slow and efficient way of generating weakness and fatigue. Well, I'm almost at failure. That was close to failure. I didn't feel like getting failure, but whew, and that's it. That's the five sets. That took me 20 minutes. It took me 20 minutes to do one exercise. Highly inefficient. Now, originally I was gonna go through the entire workout, but that's gonna be an hour video. <laughs> so, you know, I think we're gonna do, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna break these up into separate videos. All right. This is just gonna be the bench press segment of that four exercise workout. The next one would be incline, which honestly makes absolutely no sense to me. After you do five sets of bench press, why would you do five sets of incline, whatever. Then chest flying dips. Well, this was Arnold's first exercise, five sets, 10 reps, give or take, bench press, the traditional rest periods, and I spent 20 minutes getting to the feeling, getting to the level of muscle fatigue and stimulus that I could have achieved just doing one set with high intensity training. It's unbelievably inefficient. If you want to learn how to save a ton of time, and instead of taking 20 minutes to train your chest, get your entire chest trained and stimulated in about 90 seconds, Go to goldenairassistant.com, download my program. You'll get the same, if in many cases, better results than doing something like Arnold's program in, let's see, 1 20th of the time. The thing is the volume is way too friggin' high on this. Set three, I'm already cooked. Why are they doing five? How's anybody gonna do five sets of all this? The only way to do five sets of all this is to not push hard. I just don't get it. I feel like I'm not pushing hard at all. And uh, by the fifth set on the bench press, I was smoked. 
I'm gonna get here, set three on the, here I'm smoked. Honestly, the only way to make it through this workout would be to take super long rests and not push hard. And not pushing hard is the literal opposite way to recruit muscle fibers. I don't understand how anybody can endure five sets of all these exercises, this is insane. And, and I'm using momentum, I'm not using heavy weight, still can't make it through it. It's too much, it's just too much. Too many reps, too many sets. Well, let's go to the chest fly next, whatever. All right, well somehow we're supposed to get through five sets of the flies after doing all those <laughs> chest press. It's just insane. But, like the only, literally, the only way anybody could train like this is if you're not pushing hard. Completely ridiculous. All right, set one of five, here we go. I guess I'll go how oh, fast they go. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, I'm already, my chest completely destroyed <laughs> after, after what I did, nine, nine sets. It's just like, it's, it's such ridiculous, complete overkill. And with each additional set, you're depleting your recovery resources more. You're producing more inflammation, more microtrauma that still needs to recover before your body makes the adaptation. You're literally just, with each additional set, you're prolonging the recovery period. It, it makes no sense. If people are training like this, like insistently, A, you're doing way too much. This is too much. I've been training for 15 years. No like 17 years um and this is way too much i don't even know how anybody how anybody endures this but um all right so two here we go it's just and it's, it's just so inefficient it's like whatever <clears throat> You, you couldn't possibly do five sets all this. This is insane. If Arnold Schwarzenegger said he did five sets everything, he's, he's either lying or he's just really not training hard. There's no way you can do five sets. That's two sets. My chest is completely shot. I can't, I can't do three more sets of this. It'd be pointless. I'm at the point now where I, I can't, you know, the muscles, the, the pecs are so fatigued when you start to tap into those fast twitch motor units, there's just nothing there. There's nothing there. It's just you're using all slow twitch motor units at this point. Fast twitch are cooked. You, you, there's, there's almost no more to uh, stimulate or recruit. Whatever, I, there's no way, he, no way five sets of all this, this is nuts. You'd have to be literally walking through the exercises. You, you couldn't possibly put your body hard at all and tolerate this. All right, we'll go to the dips. All right, this is the supposed to be the last one here. Dips. I mean, I'll probably squeeze out two sets, but everything's completely shot. I don't even think I can do one set. What the fuck? No, holy shit. It's insane. I can't even do one set of this. I can't do one rep. How is it? Nothing, absolutely nothing. What the? All right, we're gonna recap this. 
Let's recap this workout. So we did five sets of the bench press. I did three sets of the incline bench press, eight sets. I did two sets of the fly, 11 sets. After all that, chest, triceps, everything was so fatigued, I could not perform one single day. So what does that tell us? A, that workout was complete bullshit. Nobody's actually doing that workout. It's way too much. Or two, again, the only way to make it through that workout would be to not push your body at all. That's it. So if that's actually Arnold's chest routine, that is way too much. I couldn't make it through it. And to be honest, I spent over an hour here in the gym total, 45 minutes since I started, and um, I don't feel nearly as taxed overall as when I do just a regular high intensity training workout. I just beat the dead horse with the, with the chest exercises over and over. Do, does my chest feel fatigued? Yeah, it feels cooked. Does it feel any more cooked than one set to failure? No. If I could do a set of chest press, a set of fly, and uh, one set of dips, and then not be able to do another set of dips, that's the thing. You can get the same amount of fatigue just out of a well-performed set than just beating the dead horse over and over again. That was just a highly inefficient way to train, train chest. And you, you couldn't possibly make it through this whole workout without, while pushing even relatively hard. So, so that's Arnold's chest workout. I do not recommend it. If you want to try it, that was like fitness challenges. Like if you can do a thousand push-ups or whatever, that's what that is. It's like a fitness challenge. I'm extremely strong and I've been in good shape for a long time. Can't make it through that. If you can, the only reason you made it through it is because you didn't push yourself. All right. If you guys want to give it a shot, I'll put a link to it in the description, but that's just a very silly approach to training. You're far better off doing a high intensity training approach. You're going to get more fatigue. You're going to save way more time and your joints are going to be way healthier. Because you know, I tried to do it like the bodybuilders did, just kind of repping through them with momentum. Over time, it's going to beat your joints up. So in the end, don't bother with something like this. It's just nuts. Go to goldenarrowsystem.com, use my program. You're going to get a way better stimulus than this. You're going to be able to train all your muscle groups in one workout instead of having to spend six days in the gym. And um, you're going to save a lot of time. This is just nuts. This is just stupid. All right. Don't forget to subscribe and the bell notification icon so you'll be notified when I drop more videos. And if you want me to teach you personally how to do high intensity training, track all your workouts, track your diet, personally teach you how to do this, you'll probably see five to 10 pounds of muscle in the first growth. I got DEXA scans to prove it. Click the link in the description, book a call with me. Let me coach you, all right? If you really want to transform that physique quick, we got to do it together. All right, I'll see you guys on the next video.